Hey, fa. Ah. The first classic races of the season are in the pocket. I only did three. I did Omloop at Nieuwsblad, Samen, and Strade Bianchi. I pulled out of Tirreno Adriatico because I'll explain you now. I did a very good uh, altitude camp uh, to prepare the classics and we decided not to do any racing before Omloop because my feeling is I'm always in the best possible shape when I just start to uh, to race without any preparation and uh, trained very hard on altitude camp uh, in Sintrosfera, you've seen the vlogs, Florian and Brent were there, it was really a very good altitude camp in, in Omloop at Nieuwsblad. I was ready for a good good result, um, but we can say that maybe we made a little bit of a mistake to ride with too low tire pressure. Nowadays with tubeless you can ride very low and still have very good rolling resistance uh, and be very comfortable, very easy on the cobblestones. And we maybe made the mistake to ride too low because if you go too low you can puncture more easy on the cobblestones. Uh, we tested it uh, a lot of times actually, but when you test it you're not riding in the peloton, you're riding on your own and you can see clearly, clearly well where you are riding. And in the peloton you, you might hit a bigger cobblestone than you expect. And uh, early in the race I punctured on the Padestraat. Had to waste some energy to come back, but it was not really a problem. But then later on, second time, Holloweg, going down very fast, I puncture again. And like, what we do is we, we continue. Uh, because in a classic, the cards are far uh, behind the peloton. So you continue and you try not to take any risk. So you lose the least possible time. And I'm continuing, going quite fast. Uh, on a flat tire and, and there's a big pile up in front of me, a big crash uh, and you know you, you, you shouldn't but still you, you hit the brakes because it's your, your reaction and I hit the brakes, I have, a, I have a flat tire in front and I don't even hit the riders that are piled up uh, but I just lose the front wheel and I crash I would say over 50k an hour I crash on my elbow and then I hit with with just my chest uh, the ground but cobblestones you know it's not flat and I think there was a cobblestone a bit like this and I hit it my chest hard had to wait quite a while to um, to change the wheel we changed the wheel but um, then uh, I had some problems because my derailleur was crooked and then it was shifting very bad and uh, I needed to change the bike to survive the muur. I was 100% sure if I would do the muur van Gerard Bergen with, uh, without being really able to shift that it would be a problem. So I shifted the bike and again I had to chase, chase back. It was deep in the final already. And then maybe I lost some confidence before we hit the muur. But then on the muur I felt I still have quite some power left in the tank. And then we went to Bosberg and uh, I did what I regret about the race is you can't regret a flat tire, that's something that happens, but I regret when Wout van Aert attacked, I hesitated a second, I just, I first looked to the others what their reaction was, but when Wout van Aert launches an attack, you, you shouldn't hesitate, it's, you know it's a decisive move, so you should go straight away with him, I waited for a second and, uh, which made it, I think impossible to uh, to follow the move. I don't say I would be would have been able to follow the move if I reacted right away, but there would have been a chance. Now I don't think there was a real chance. So uh, Van Aert solo. I was in a group of about 20 riders behind. I did a decent sprint, became fifth in the race, and uh, with uh, the the bad luck I had with the punctures and then for sure with the crash, I think fifth was was a good result. Without any bad luck, of course, there would have been more possible. At night, I felt quite okay, but when I woke up the day after, I was ruined, I was destroyed. 
Um, I had very a lot of difficulties breeding. I did an easy ride one hour at uh, go to my Strava and look it up. I think I did one hour at 130 watts, something like that. But I couldn't even talk. Uh, was with Florian, and I couldn't even talk to Florian because I lost lost my breath because I just couldn't breathe. Um, day after was a bit better, and then uh, on the day of Samen, at the start, I was excited and. I just you need to convince yourself that you're 100 percent but when I did the race um, and when we hit it the final and I really needed my full breathing capacity that's when I really started hurting and I did some really stupid moves in the race it's true there were some uh, some comments on that people said that I took the telephone before I attacked to say hello guys I'm going to do an attack make sure you're there um, was not good but I think it was just I, I wouldn't say I'm the smartest rider but at that moment in the race I was not with my head in the race I think it's a natural reaction when you're out of breath and your your body has a feeling that you're about to to die because you can't breathe that you're just in, in a panic reaction and uh, I was in full panic mode uh, because I was all the time very short in breath, like... <laughs> and with a small part of my brain, I only have a small brain, you know, <laughs> a small part of my small brain was still there thinking, okay, try to win this race, but it was very difficult. And of course, if I look to the race uh, afterwards, actually, I didn't do that because I knew I did a stupid race and I know sixth was where I ended, but it should have been better. But with this rib confusion, rib, not rib confusion, rib, rib bruises. I don't know if the ribs are bruised or if they are broken, uh, but still there was an option to win the race, but I should have played it very smart and that was not what I was doing at that moment. Uh, and then after the race, I was in a lot of pain. I was for about three hours really struggling to breathe and, and just try to get my body at ease again um, and then we, we, we talked straight away we said okay Tirreno is on the charge your body needs rest but uh, we decided to go for Strade Bianchi not because you <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Not because we, we thought uh, I was going to win Strade Bianchi. Um, of course, I would have won Strade Bianchi but without all of my problems. So maybe maybe I could have done a good final there. But we had Tim Wallace. He is in a very good shape. He is flying, and I w I wanted to support him, and also the team needed me there to to support him. But Strade Bianchi really uh, was a, was a shit show for me. Uh, very early on in the race, about after 5k's, in a very easy corner, I I lost the front wheel on something that should have been a slippery part of asphalt. Uh, really don't really know what happened there. I needed to change the bike because the bike was broken. I had pain in my back um, because of the crash and then uh, I had to do another wheel change. Uh, to get the appropriate gears for uh, for what was coming, and then um, I, I did it on a bad moment, so I had to chase chase uh, the bunch when they were going really really fast, and then there was the big big pileup. Everybody have seen the, has seen the pileup, and and uh, Julien he did a spectacular salto mortale, and uh, I what I did was not spectacular. It, 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 I think it looked very stupid. I was not caught up in the crash, but uh, you know, I, I didn't crash, but my bike fell down and uh, I had to get my chain back on. And then when I wanted to start, I was going very slow and there was a lot of wind. And uh, I, you know, with all the dust and the, and the, the gravel on the pedals, I was not able to keep out. Uh, fast enough so I I was going 5k an hour and I just fell down on my hip and 
you know, those those crashes they hurt. Of course, it hurts more when you're going 100k an hour and you hit a wall. But if you're going very slow and you fall down, you don't have any scratches, but the impact is quite big. When you have some speed, you slide. And okay, you don't want those uh, those big scratches, but there's less impact on your body. Um, and then uh, I got, I was so far far behind, I was hurting, and then. Uh, uh, I was forced to abandon the race with Brent Van Moor, he crashed also, he crashed quite hard, he, he had some big scars and then, uh, yeah, now I'm here, we decided to pull out of Tirreno and uh, what you gonna do, what you gonna do with all that, man? all that, man? <laughs> um, it's important to fight back, to fight back harder, um, not always easy. It's easy to just uh, to just say fuck that shit. But in my life, I learned you need to harden the fuck up when you have something bad going on. I w would have never have become a professional rider if I just um, didn't fight back harder. I became a professional rider because I was just a decent bike rider, but I had a, a hard crash. Um, and I broke my collarbone, I broke uh, my elbow, I broke some ribs and uh, it hurt, but especially in the elbow was the radioscope and the only thing I could do was ride my time trial bike, so that's what I did I think it was 30 degrees in Belgium and for, uh, for three weeks I was on the rollers two times a day on my time trial bike first race I did after that crash, European champs and I won Nobody expected me to win. We were there with three Belgian riders and I was the first to get off the podium because I was the, it was the most unlikely that I would uh, do a good result, but I was uh, the first to go off the podium and I was the, the first in the results also. That's how I do it. But anyways, the team is going super well very happy to be to be part of that team and you can also feel the races we did you know we are there we're not just riding the race but we are we are taking control over the race we decide what's happening and uh, the team i i don't know how many times the team has won already um i'm also very happy to see arno de Lee is, is winning races already you know he's for me he's a little bit like um I don't know what to say, but a bit my, my child. <laughs> no, no, I take care of him a little bit because he's a young rider. He's 19 years old. One, nine, 19 years old. I'm 30 years old. Um, so I cannot be his father. But still, I uh, I like to uh, try to, to introduce him in the professional life. Um, he came already uh, two times to my home and we do some trainings in... in on the Flanders roads and uh, you know I try to how to take care of yourself how to to pack your suitcase before a race how to small things that are they that's very you will learn it by yourself if you don't have anybody to tell you but he is very eager um, he, he wants to uh, to learn from me he thinks I'm I'm a good professional rider and uh, He's winning races already, second race he won already, and uh, I was impressive to see uh, Florian Vermeers. He crashed also hard in San Man, but um, he, in the GP Monster, he, he just like a big boss, he, he shattered the field, riding on, on the head of the peloton, and everybody was like crying in his wheel for his mama. And then Ardo. First year professional, 19 years old, just wins that race. When are you coming back? Um, I have to say I'm not too sure when I will come back. Most likely it will be no Kurekurs, but it will not be a goal. After that I will braid on the Kokseide, uh, we'll do braid on the Kokseide and it will also not be a goal. Um, I want to be back on the best possible level in the E3 press, but um, yeah, just to be honest, uh, it will not be easy and I know I have a lot of pain in my ribs right now. Um, 
I uh, have some some forced rest uh, to give my body time uh, to recover a bit, but the ribs is just uh, it will not be it be gone in in two weeks from now. It's not the perfect preparation, but to close off, I would say in a classic. Um, you're not unlucky when you crash, but you're lucky when you don't crash. Uh.